Welcome on in, everyone. Welcome, welcome, happy pride. Ah, welcome on in. For those who do not know me, hello. My name is Light Ops. I'm a heaven hound. I'm an East Capitanist. I know I don't look too heavenly or houndly right now. Let me, let me, let me quickly take off my little, my little outfit here. Oh, what the heck? It was not at all what I meant to do. Um, <laughs> hold on a sec. <sighs> I lost my fun music. I lost my fun pride. What the hell? OBS, why are you like this? Why are you like this, OBS? Anyhow, um, I'm going to take this off real quick. This mode. So you can see, hi, yeah, I'm a heaven now. I'm a little doggo. Oh, and uh, I have a brick with me. Don't worry, it'll make sense soon. Anyhow, hi, welcome on in. I hope you are, are having a wonderful time on this pride parade. Huh. So, today, what do I want to do with everyone? <laughs> what I wanted to get up to was talking a little bit about magic. Uh, specifically some pretty gay gay magic. Uh, let me get back to my screen here. There we go. I got a little music in the background. Keep things lighthearted. Looking respectfully at your very pretty face. You're gonna make me blush. You're gonna make me blush. <laughs> Anyhow. So. Uh, for Pride, what I want to talk about is, because I've been doing kind of a journey with magic stuff lately, I want to teach people things that I know, and one of the things I thought would be fun and kind of creative is creating chakra-style energy systems using various Pride flags. But then I started doing research, and I realized that the Pride flag, the Pride flag, everyone, it's already magic! I didn't know. I didn't know. And assuming some of you don't know, I'm going to go into it a little bit if you're already you ready for a little bit of edumacation. So, the flag I have behind me is called the Gilbert Baker flag, right? <laughs> Alright, I'm glad you're ready to learn. I'm glad you're ready. So, this is a Gilbert Baker flag, uh, created obviously by Gilbert Baker. Now, honestly, traditional magic is very queer-coded. I mean, yeah. Listen, every... Near every culture, if you're, you know... If you're part of the Alphabet Mafia, probably one of your jobs will include doing magic for people because, well... We're already a little off the beaten path, and for some reason that seems to open up our senses to the world of all the supernatural things and make us better suited to dealing with it than the everyday people who will hate us anyway and then come to us for help when they're like, oh no, my house is haunted. But <laughs> that is almost an entirely different presentation. We're going to talk about pride and we're going to talk about this flag. So, uh, prior to um, this flag and prior, I think even a little bit to Stonewall, a uh, pink triangle was often used as the symbol, which was used by the Nazis in camps to denote people who were um, trans or gay, uh, you know, homosexual, etc. And my house is not wanted, but I want more gay people in it. I mean, this, this could be used for some of that. This could be used. Anyhow, the intention of Gilbert's flag was hope. Rainbows have often been a symbol of hope you know, in different cultures and stuff. It lets you know the storm is over. It lets you know the sun will shine again. It's important. And so creating a symbol of hope was what this was created in. Rather than having a reclaimed symbol, which does have its own power and is important, it was something for us to all feel like there would be brighter days. That the darkness we've experienced will end. And so, that's the kind of power behind this flag. Now, each of the colors has a meaning. So, we're going to go over them. So, the first one, hot pink, is for sex. I mean, and, and let's be honest, it's a part of it. I'm, I'm bisexual. Um, 
I, some may even say pansexual. I, I hate seeing it. I'm a little old and I kind of get confused on what the difference is. But for the most part, people, people pretty. I like people. Um, live under, it's kind of annoying that so many people who call up magic concepts just use the idea of masculine and feminine energy to reinforce rigid gender roles when magic promotes the concept of getting in touch with both energies as well as fusing the two is important for self-actualization. Jeez, that is a big thing, and I'm going to agree. Yeah, it is a little sad, it is a little traditional, and it is a little um, controlling. I think for your mind, I am a chaos magician. I think that essentially, as long as it isn't hurting nobody or ripping anybody off, you know, cultural appropriation is a thing, and I think we all need to be careful of it. But... I think that basically everything's up for grabs. The symbol sets we have, whether they are pop cultural or, you know, traditional, are valid if they can if they can improve our lives and improve the lives of other people. So whatever we gotta use. Anyhow, <laughs> try and stay on topic here. So the first one, the pink one, is for sex, because obviously sex is part of being in the alphabet mafia, whether it's Cause you don't have it cause you have it with you know people that are um the same sex as you or same gender you know or or you know whatever variations they're in the second one is life because we're alive we are we exist our life matters heck yeah full final duty but you know i, I hate saying you know being queer in this world can be very damaging. People do not understand. People give you looks. People may even try to actually hurt you. Um, or, you know, even if it's only emotionally. Healing. The orange for healing is important. It's very important because we need to be able to heal if we're going to be strong and able to do what we need to do in this world. To live. To see those brighter days. To keep that life going. Now, sunlight, obviously, there's just, it's yellow. It's like the sun. But I think some of this is about that energy that helps us come out. It says, this is who I am. You're going to have to deal with it. I'm here and I'm clear. You know? Having that um, element there is very important to say, we're here. We've always been here and we're not going anywhere. You know? So, you're going to have to deal with us. And, you know, it, I will say that abuse seems to always thrive in the shadows. It is hidden. It tries to create walls. It tries to isolate so no one hears the screams. And then, you know, neutral at best terrible people can then ignore it. And they don't have to think, oh, I'm, I'm a bad person because I'm letting bad things happen. But when you're out in the open, it's one of those like, nope, the horrors are going to get revealed. You, we're going to know every dirty, terrible thing you are. We're going to know who looks like a monster here. And yeah, and you find cute Yaga <laughs> one. Uh, next is nature. Because we're natural. Yay, animals exist. Homosexuality, transgender is in the wild, everyone. Sorry to tell you, we're part of this world. If your appeal for being anti lgbtq is somehow based on like oh it's not natural i know nature and usually these are from bozos who don't know even basic science god there was some insane conspiracy theory thing i saw today talking about how trans women were created by basically stealing estrogen from normal women and i'm just like you've never cracked a biology book once in your life you have no idea how any of this works you're a freaking ah it's just hearing that i'm like our education system i would say it fails us or there's just people failing being educated i don't know but yeah it's natural we happen we're on purpose and i hate saying in the you know mechanics of evolution we're meant to be here we serve vital roles all over the place the world improves because we're here better things happen because we're here and it's not a thing of like oh well you're trying to you know belittle the no we can shine bright in different ways 
then, you know, the cis and the hetero people will. And that's okay. We can all shine together. It's not a competition, everyone. And, but that's important. We, we shine our own bright light in this world. We have been selected by nature. I think by, you know, gods and spirits and stuff too. We're meant to be here. Now, the next one's very important. Because it's magic! And also art. And art is magic. The intention of this flag. An intention is pretty important in magic. When you're going to cast a spell, what do you got to do? You got to have intent. What am I going to try and do? Right? What am I going to try and get done? I remember when I was a kid and my older sister told me her dog was gay. And I was just like, no! Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, nature's hella gay. But... Where was I at? Magic, art, nature. Right. So, magic. When doing something like a magic spell, spell you want to have intent. Then you're going to alter your um, consciousness. And when you hit an altered consciousness state, you will build up to a peak point called the gnosis point. Which is when the spell, in quotations, fires off. And that intent is sent into the universe. And then you do like a banishing to get yourself back to the everyday so you don't screw it up, right? You let the magic go do what it's going to do. This flag and many pieces of art are in fact all in their own way spell. To figure things out like this, you're putting yourself in the art mind, which is an altered state. It is different than your everyday. You're not always thinking, what's the symbolism of every color? What does this flag mean? But the meaning of this was brighter days. And I think this has been an incredibly successful hyper sigil. Just the fact we're looking at it, talking about it right now, we're giving energy to that. Just by viewing this, just by standing up, by wearing it, by showing it, all of that gives it power. And this thing's intent, this piece of art, this magic was for those brighter days to come. And you know, I'll say, there's still a long way to go. There's a lot of stuff out there that's scary right now, but in some ways, we made a lot of progress too, and we really need to be proud. Pride! <laughs> we need to have pride in that. So the next one, serenity. I think that's important because we could be in a state of constantly agitated of, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, with the anxieties placed on us by a society that, that doesn't always accept doesn't always accept yeah i think that might be somewhat an addition but i will talk about that in a minute maelstrom mind so i think it's important yeah to have that peace because if we're at war if we're always like on the march so to speak if we're always having to fight then we're not enjoying the peace we've gained that we've earned in this world we deserve to have quiet moments good rest you know, um, you know, we deserve having some peace in this world. And so serenity, I think, is important. And to be able to deal with bigots and things in a way that is beneficial to us, not falling to their level if it isn't useful to fall to their level. Don't get me wrong. There's, um, you know, I got a little, I got a little bit of magic in my hand. Anyhow, um, I'm just saying most of the time that isn't the best way to go. And so we need to get along in our day to day. Serenity is very important. And spirit! We're going to always have to keep our spirit up. But also, I think, and you're not sure if it's 100% in the meaning of how it was originally conceived, but, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's magical. That is tapping into the other side. We have souls. Our souls are important. We have our own spirit. Our, our trans and, and gay and lesbian and, the whole legitimate choir, <laughs> the whole alphabet mafia, we all have our spirit. Our spirits are just as real, as important as everybody else. And to be honest, with how many magic people tend to be um, legitimate choir, I, I think, honestly, we got spirits on our side if we want them. We gotta be careful about them. So one thing I want to talk about with this flag, and I think it's very important taking a look at it, is one thing you do not see on here, and this isn't. I, I, I'm. This is discussion pool. There is not really. You can't achieve revolution without revolutionary optimism. Yeah, exactly. But one thing we don't have on here is really much in the way of identity. 
right? Like, okay, let's be honest. All of these could be a gender. <laughs> I mean, every single one could. But, for the most part, these are not identity words. These are elements of what it takes for us to have hope and, and, and to live the dream of, of our liberation, right? Now, later, um, a lot of flags start going into more identity things. I'm going to pop up one or two. Just, just one or two. Because I, I didn't want to... I can't do every flag. We've only got an hour, people. We've only got an hour. I can't do every flag. But I'm going to pop one or two up here real quick. So there's, there's an obvious one for me to look at. But here's our trans pride flag. Now, the elements on this are essentially, you know, typical mask, typical femme, and then, you know, all the in-betweens and neithers with the white stripe. It is meant to be inclusive to everybody, but all of those are identity words. Heck yeah. Now, there's the thing, and when I look at it from a magical perspective of what we could use, I think there's a lot more magic possibility in the, in the Gilbert flag. But, I do think there's some power in here, too. Because, in a way, all these flags are to say we're part of it. I think a lot of it fell out of the fact that there was times where, as a movement, sometimes some of the letters in the Alphabet Mafia were not being given the same kind of time, energy, or credit as others. And there's plenty of people who are like, you know, I'm... I'm whatever and i've already got mine right gay marriage real i'm done i'm not gonna fight anymore like y'all y'all rest of you can just go drown and try to do your best there are people who were sadly just they're kind of like i got mine i'm done and that's a shame that's a real shame so a lot of the you know new flags have been ways to rectify the people who got left behind, people who were minorities, people who were, you know, um, a little more out there. I think trans people get left behind because it's not easy to blend into a boardroom when you're a trans woman. It's hard. It's a hard time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's pretty sad, but that was a thing even before Stonewall. There was a lot of, um, uh, I was I was looking up things on Stonewall too. There were a lot of men who wanted to just dress up in suits and be like, while I may be homosexual, I'm an average American. Everything I do is very good for the economy. Look at me arriving at my job, wearing a gray suit and not making waves. Just let me, you know, do what I want to do when I'm out of sight, okay? And that was all they wanted. That was what they were settling for. And honestly, all that did, once again, back to our other flag here. Sunlight. Abuse thrives in the shadows. Hiding? Let them get away with a lot. Us being out and in the open? Sure, they can strike at us, but their crimes are seen. They're known. Not unknowns, right? It's important. Yeah, Arthur, you pretty much got it right. You, you pretty much got it right. Sylvia Riviera once called out, those people want to make a pride straight gay club. Exactly, exactly. Huh. So, one of the things is, is so Gilbert um, passed away in 2017. But before Gilbert did... They made one last um, version of this flag. Because at some point, and this is the thing, most magic is trans anyway. Transformation, translocation, tracking, transportation. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. But there was a time, obviously, the modern flag often takes out the pink and the teal. And here's the things. There's good reasons for it. There's very good reasons, right? Um, the good reasons... Because, like, it wasn't to be presentable. It wasn't because this was stuff they were trying to hide. It was because teal and pink were expensive. They were expensive and hard to get. And so being able to create the six-stripe flag, it allowed for it to be displayed in more easy ways. But also, 
also doing the six stripes flag, flag was more affordable for people because this isn't even copyrighted. Gilbert Baker wouldn't do it because that's not what this is about. This is something that's supposed to be available for everyone, right? Yeah, you got it, Arlie. And I think that's really important. But I do really appreciate that before before Gilbert passed, they added one more thing to this flag. There we go. So a I think it's diversity was added. Yeah, an Erpa. I think it's meant to be a lilac color. So, pink removed from the pride flag, sex no longer allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there's the thing. It was an economic reason. It was a good reason why these things went. But I think it's an equally good reason why diversity was added. Because this is not meant to be just a flag of just, you know, homosexual men. It is not meant to be just a flag for the most... For It's meant to be for all of us. This was... A spell cast and successfully in this edition and, and return now that we've got you know probably more available colors and stuff and we can get this made a lot more easy a lot more affordable I think it's good we should get it all we should have this full spectrum of diversity and sex and life and healing and sunlight and nature magic and art serenity and spirit so the question obviously becomes a little bit, how do we work with this? There's a bunch of different ways we could, but I think using the flag itself as sort of a talisman has a very accessible power, even for those of us who are not, you know, very deep, deep into the magic scene. If you're like, I don't know how to do magic. Well, well, we've got some ways. What I'm thinking is, is first, you need to kind of know all your things, right? You want to know these words, what they relate to. And then, I think an easy way to do it is to set this up like an altar cloth. Now, once you set it up like an altar cloth, there's different ways we could try to bring about the energy of a given stripe. Like, we could go through all of them and kind of do like a, a prairie mantra thing, but I don't, I don't think that's really the right way to go. I think it's more to say, okay, what do I need in my life right now, right? Now, if you don't know what you need in your life right now, you could do, like, a bone throwing or a, um, like a rune casting type thing, right? So you could pick up a talisman. I would recommend some pennies, because pennies were thrown at Stonewall because there was a, it was an active protest comment on the cops being pissed off about not being paid off and that's why that raid went down you know just corrupt cop things um best way to learn magic is fuck around and find out i will agree with that so using a penny as a talisman i think you could cast those and you see where the pennies land on the flag and go okay those are the areas i'm gonna concentrate on right now so you could use it a little oracularly, like, as a way to figure out what area of my life I need to work on at any given time. So that's a divination type man. What if we're ace and can't bone? <laughs> I, 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 oh, god damn it. Oh, Great. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Jump right into black magic and start hexing the cops chat. Just a little bit of gay spy, just a treat. Just a little, just a little. Well, one of the other things I think you can do is once you kind of know what you want to do, like, and I can see all of these having some level of use in it, right? Like, I mean, let's be honest, sometimes, sometimes you might be feeling a little lonely, you might want to have a little more sexy time in your life. You could, as kind of a plea to the universe, Try to put some energy on sex. Obviously, if you've got life issues, you know, job, etc., I think life works pretty good for that. Healing is obvious if you need healing. Sunlight, if there's somebody, if you feel like someone's lying to you, or you feel like somebody's getting away with something wrong and then should be brought to light, sunlight is super the thing you should do. Now, with all of these, you can, uh, 
Well, we, we, we keep going through. So nature obviously can deal with natural things. Um, magic. If you're just doing a more purely magical thing, or if you're going to create some art, I think that would be a good one to use. Um, war mode! I have so much power! Alright then, everyone. It's time. <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna go hard then. Alright, so, let's just say, I don't know. We've hit a point where we're, we're kind of done with thing, and I'm trying to look on here. What is our most war magic like thing? Hmm, I think spirit might be it. I think when you're really feeling the level of I am going to absolutely annihilate somebody, I want to knock their soul clean out of their body. Well, you'll need to go ahead and use spirit. So, what's a way we can do this? What's an easy way that even people who have aphantasia, which is when you can't visualize very well, how can we use this energy? Well, our flag, which is already kind of charged just by being, I would say you could go ahead, set it up like an altar cloth. I would put down a glass of water on it. The reason is, is because a glass of water is a very common ancestor offering. It is one of the most basic. And in that way, we're calling upon the spirits of people, you know, all, all of the alphabet mafia, those who have come, those who are here, those who are yet to come to our aid and add their energy to this, our spirit, our collective spirit. And then I would apply, you know, something to designate a target and a magical stone. And what is this I have in my hand? Is it a magical stone? I think it is. This is the humble brick. What can a brick do? Well, it can build things. It can destroy things. It can start a movement. It can honestly do just about anything. It can fly <laughs> if you if you got a good arm. Point is, brick is highly magical. It is one of my favorite magical stones. And and to be perfectly serious too, it does get used in some hoodoo and stuff like that. Uh, tradition to which I do not belong in, therefore I do not want to talk to too much because it's not my business. But I just uh, come up here and sneak our brick out. We can just put this, you could lay it on the flag. You can put your offering of water on top of the brick. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe a picture of your intended target if you have a target. If you don't have a picture, you could take a piece of chalk, write it on the brick, and say, you know, just that, um, give your intent and say, this person has done great harm to our community. And I believe that at this time, the only way for us to resist them is to hit them with this brick and let the rest take care of itself. Heck, let nature take care of itself. Like, I'm gonna be honest, spirit's pretty good if what you're trying to do is literally knock their spirit out of them, leave them, you know, breathless, without wit, without the energy to be a jerk. Oh, I'm not seeing chat right now. The purest absence of a fine earth. Heck yeah. Yeah, so... We could do that. But I mean, like, your mileage may vary depending on what you want to do. You could, you know, um... If you wanted it to be... Some, if you want to just maybe get it to be where you're like, I need more peace in my life. You know, move those away who will do me harm. And bring close those who give me peace. And you can put it on serenity and just as a general kind of blessing deal. If you're literally trying to cause a tornado to hit them, nature might be the thing. But your mileage may vary. That's going to be hard. That's that's some advanced ass stuff. And, and i got to be honest, that stuff is uh, tricky and not a lesson I'm teaching on Twitch.tv today. But I think this one would be pretty good. I think that's pretty reasonable. Sunlight to bring crimes to light and things like that. But also, if you're having a hard time 
standing out. Maybe you're Maybe it's for a practical day thing. Like, I need to go to a job. I need to show who I am. And I need people to take me seriously. I need some glamour, right? Glamour being projecting your personality to, to kind of get something done. You're like, I need them to know who I am. Take me seriously. And see exactly how good I am at stuff. You could put it on sunlight and be like, hey, I need to shine, baby. I need to shine. And I think, I think diversity too is, is, is pretty important. I think for that one, obviously, that might be a couple of things. Because I think one, that could be very good on a protection level. Like if you think that things are being unfair and that people in your local community are not being treated well, you might be like, okay, we need something to help facilitate. We need, we need our ancestors to come in here, join hand in hand, and show them the unity we've been lacking lately, right? Yeah, I think that could help. And uh, yeah, so those, that is a, a simple method you could do. Brick, offering, and applying it to the correct energy with using chalk to write on your brick and say what it is you need in your life. Now, I'm not going to go into energy centers with this one too much because for one, whew, this is a lot. <laughs> like, I could do this. I could map a whole chakra system to it and we could find places on the body that might be interesting correspondences to it. I think, I think we all know where things would get real pink, huh? <laughs> um... Oh yeah, VTubing is a form of magic. Listen, art is magic. Like, any art you make has some magic to it. You are putting your brain onto a visual medium that others can take in. Or or maybe if your art is like more auditory or whatever, it might be, you know, something they can hear. It could be something, maybe even they can smell, you know. Or if you're a real talented baker, maybe something they can taste. Your art is important. It communicates something to the world. It bewitches the senses. It can make understandable, complex things that cannot otherwise be easily understood. Yeah, you're making tangible the intangible. It's a very good way to put it. So, all of these are modes you can do. Um, and, and I think you could also definitely... Uh, if you're if you're more of a visual person, if you wanted to get this energy into you, you could, you know, instead of using brick, although you could use brick, or if you wanted to use like, um, if you wanted to use more of um, like a different magic stone, like this is the one I prefer <laughs> for this particular lesson, but I do think you could use other magical stones. Um, ones that resonate with you or have a good correspondence with the things we have on here. And you could then take the time and you could put your hand on it and the stone and try to breathe in that energy and realize this energy has been put in over and over and over again. Every pride, we are charging this thing. We are charging it to the max. And we're part of that right now. We're putting all that energy in. In fact, I'm just going to look at my flag and I'm going to be like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1000. And I'm just going to pump it up. I'm just going to get it to where it is bright, shiny, glowing as I put energy into it. Because I need to do my part. I'm going to put my energy in here because I want this to work for me. Yeah, there we go. So, I think the brick is too epic not to use. I kind of agree, but one of the things you could do is you could put your hand onto the flag. You could take a deep breath in. And if you can visualize, visualize that that energy is flowing in you. That is flowing around your body. In your aura and feel your you kind of close your eyes and imagine your whole body starts to glow with that energy with each breath in until you become suffused with it for whatever it is you might need to do or whatever you're trying to accomplish because just applying these to yourself is a way to either apply a glamour or to help something internally in you 
Remember to invoke the three-part goddess when you touch the brick. Marsha P, Miss Major, and Sylvia, yeah! That's fair. Honestly, the, the whole idea of doing the water glass as a ancestor thing, if you have specific gay ancestors, and I'm not saying they have to be related to you. In a way, every person who was part of this movement has allowed us to have a place in it. I know 100% that a lot of my life, I was kind of, I'm going to be honest, I was kind of a coward. I kind of shied away. I did also didn't figure myself out right away, and so I didn't do a whole lot. And I do feel some guilt about it. I feel like I haven't done enough. But I'm here now, and I'm trying to do my part while I can. But yeah, calling on specific luminaries from the gay community definitely gives, I think, you know, it gives us a little more, I think, oomph on things. We need to do things for them, too. Like, this is one of those things that I've often gets kind of, eh, kind of mixed around, depending on who you are. People will say, oh, you're doing uh, a, a funeral. Well, that's for the living, not for the dead. Well, no. There's a lot of belief systems where we actually do believe the dead are around. We're not thinking they're locked in heaven behind those gilded cages. We do not believe that they have gone to poof. I'm calling on those ancestors, even if it's archetypical, even if you're only thinking of them as the figure and the inspirations they have, can definitely give us a boost. Let us know how far we've come, how far we gotta go. And being a part of that chain, working hand in hand with them, that's important. And doing things for them can give power to those ancestors to act. So giving them water, giving them offerings, hell, giving them the best gay drink you know they loved in life, that shit's important. You know, go ahead and do that. We're gonna move off of this for a moment so I can I can look at the other flags we got because we're, we're about halfway through-ish. Oh, God, yes. No, that 100, maybe 200% that kind of thing really pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, we got some time. We do. And we can definitely, if, if people have any specific questions or things they want to talk about, we can go into it. But, so, identity magic. That was the next thing I wanted to go into. I'm going to go out of war mode now. I was, uh, that's quite a bit of war mode. We're going to... Although, I think that's the closest I've gotten to a multi-eyed angel state. That was kind of fun. <laughs> It's kind of good. Kind of good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying Full Frontal. Yeah. Uh, you think nice things about me. <laughs> but okay. So for now, you know. Oh, oh. <laughs> Press the wrong thing. I'm going to put the brick away for right now. I'll keep it in hand, just in case we need it, but, um, right now, we're going to talk about identity magic. So, and this is the thing, there are so many different flags that the parts of them are identity-based, you know? There, there, is a, there is a flag for basically every type of sexuality, gender, or, you know, um, romantic. There is so many flags, and they all have their own aspects. Most of them are based on identity, like this one. A couple of them throw in, like, an extra element here and there. Uh, I really like the... Oh, gosh, I can't remember its name. Uh, a couple of them will put in community, which I think is very important, and is a kind of magical element calling upon is, is good. It can do the same kind of thing as spirit. You know, it can get involved with others. But for those of us who are trans of a specific identity, I think these can be very useful as an energy center. Now, you could just use the flag and just the same technique. You could place your hand on it, breathe in, and pull that energy in. You know, sometimes I'm not feeling girly enough. So I might breathe in, and get a little nice and pink down from my head and my toes and feel really good. Yeah, although I myself, maybe help me with the gender dysphoria. You could use the flag to pull in those energies and feel more yourself, right? But, 
It can also be used in other ways, especially if you're gender fluid or if there is a specific purpose you have. Now, what I had in mind and did not make a diagram is create an energy center for each of these, like three balls of light. So you have a pink one, a white one, and a blue one. And arrange them into sort of a circle. And then that circle runs into your body. I'm turning sideways to make it a little easier to visualize. So like, imagine that one ball is kind of in front of you, floating out front, and the other two are back inside you. But this wheel can rotate. So, if you're feeling the need to, say, present a certain way, like maybe, maybe you have to be a little more in the closet because... <laughs> I, I definitely know about being a little more in the closet. My current job, uh, listen everyone, uh, it's Trumpers are everywhere. I am not comfortable being out there and I can't leave because it's, it's keeping me alive. It's, it's, it's money. And I can still mask pass in real life. Uh, although, I'll be honest, the HRT's been hitting pretty good. The other day, I breasted boobily while running down the stairs, and I was like, oh boy, these are getting harder to hide. It was good, it was a good moment, it was very gender affirming, but you may need to hide. So, by taking the energies that we have, I was just joking about boy moding for work. <laughs> yeah. These are me shaped. <laughs> A phantom head pad, thank you. Did the head pad activate? If it didn't, no. I'll put one on. Ah. Ah, this is your bliss of head pad. There's my serenity. But, you can take those energy centers and by rotating them, be able to go, okay, right now it is the time I need to present more mask. I will move the blue sphere out in front of me. And I'll put the pink sphere near to my heart. And I'll keep the gender neutral one just sort of where it needs to be. But, you know, you could also use it as an energy center when you rotate it. If you're feeling a little more fluid or you want to present more than one way at once, if you're like, you know, I want to rock, you know, the, uh, the you know, the whole, the full trying area. I want it all out there. You could push them all kind of a little out to the front. You can feel those move. And then, you know, when you visualize them out to the front, they can start to rotate. And you can just rotate them so you're literally in a gender fluid state where you're kind of presenting all the different ways all at once. It might be a little tiring, but it could feel like really natural once you just get it rotating. Like it just does that all the time. And now you've got that energy churning and maybe it'll make people notice. Listen, look at my fabulous, you know, gender fluid self. But yeah, you could also use it when you want to be real, real girly. You know, I want to be real, real girly a lot of times. You put it out front and then imagine just breathe in and feel energy flow into it and it grow bigger, bigger, brighter, mostly brighter until it is so pink <laughs> that it's blinding and it's just like, geez, you sneeze glitter, girl. You're way too girly. It's like... It's like I'm watching Barbie on television, you know? You can really push it. Follow the she hermetic principle. Align the he hemispheres and become any all-powerful. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So, but these principles I'm doing with the trans flag, but whatever your identity is, you can do that. If you're feeling the need, if you're feeling like, um, you might also use this if you're doing gender exploration. If you're like, okay, where am I feeling now? And you could, like, just kind of sit back and see which sphere seems bigger and brighter, which seems dimmer, which might, you know, be in the hiding position for out front. You could use it diagnostically to look at yourself and see how it, how it kind of rotates around as a way to kind of check in with yourself and see where you're at. So it can have a diagnostic, but could also have a kind of... Um, you know, a, a push to kind of manipulate your own identity a little and have it work and present the way you want it to. And that can be done with any of the flags. They have a whole bunch of identifiers on them. Okay, here's here's the last one. I haven't touched on this one at all, but I feel like I can get it in uh, five to ten minutes, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this last one 
is the polyamory flag. Now, I don't know how many people out there are polyamorous. I am maybe on paper a little bit polyamorous. I haven't had a multiple relationship relationship, but I'm very open to it. Just haven't had it. Call me Valerie Solanus the way I'm trying to eliminate my masculine energy. Okay, Valerie. Sorry, I just bring the name. Ah, Valerie. Valerie. You're really freaking cool. Yes, you're I'm glad you're eliminating masculine energy, Valerie. You're doing really good here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. This flag here, I'm just gonna turn on the labels because I, I, I will forget what they all mean. Otherwise, so these have qualities for someone who is in a polyamorous relationship. I like this one because, like I said, a lot of them are identity and that is okay and it's usable, but I feel like you can get a lot out of this because these things are all there. We have openness. Because you need to be a good at communicating. You need to open those channels, be an adult, and make sure everyone who is your partner and your partner's partners, everybody is able to get what they need, communicate their feelings, and not hide. Because in many ways, doing polyamory is relationships on hard mode. You've decided, hey, you know how hard it is to connect with one person and keep everything good? Let's connect with a bunch. I, I just don't have enough problems. <laughs> but really, and that isn't to denigrate polyamory either. That's for me to say, no, it's it's guys' difficulties, but some of them you can get past with openness. With a lot of openness. So that energy could be pulled in for you. When you're having trouble speaking up and saying your mind because you're scared of what other people are going to think of you, when you feel like everybody's having a, a, a rough one, you could pull on that energy and be like, you know what? We're going to have a, a family meeting and we're going to put a lot of blue energy in here because everyone needs to be calm, collected, and open. Open and just say what you're feeling. Say what you're thinking. Now the red one is for love. And love is of course important. Love is super important for this kind of thing. Whatever kind of love it happens to be. Because in a polyam relationship, there's going to be different things, you know. Like, you're going to relate to people different ways. You're going to love people different, you know, ways, probably. Um, so, love is, of course, important. I feel very pleased, proud and pleased with the Pride Parade participants and audience, you will. Yeah. So, obviously, calling upon the power of love. You could do it to bring love into your life, but I think it's important to kind of recenter a little. Because in that whole, when you're open, that's important. You get your feelings, but it's good to check in and go, how am I feeling about love? Because this is what it's all about. This is what you're going to have with all these different relationships. Having that love and being able to kind of refocus and go, what is it that I love about? You could pull that for a lot of insight. You could put it out in the universe, but you got to be careful. I could go into a long spiel on ethical love spells versus non-ethical love spells. But the simple way to put it is, don't try to force anyone to be in love with you. It's messy, it's ugly, it goes wrong, it's a bad time, don't do it. On the other hand, if you're just putting it out, that energy in the universe of I would like more love in it, it may just be kind of like calling up, you know, essentially the interfering, you know, um rom-com shippers of the universe to be like, I think I could find someone who would like you and put you in the same place at the same time, and then maybe you'll go mwah, mwah, mwah and kiss each other. You know, that's possible. And that isn't messing with free will. That's just making things easier for stuff that could happen, but it's still up to you. It's still both your choices to love. Um, infinite. That's what Pi is for. It's for the fact that love is not limited. We treat it like a limited resource sometimes. And don't get me wrong, I think I think a lot of human experience, we have to deal with a certain level of limit. We may have limits, but it doesn't have to be where we go, I can only love one person. That's ridiculous. I think we can love a lot of people. I think just as the um, like Greek and Romans had different words for love too, there's different kinds of love. You know, I, I may have theoretically have partners, I might be in some sort of polycule where I am 
in love with one person, but my, my like, uh, was it paramours? I might really love them. Like, you know, I want to hug you and I want you to be safe and you're one of my favorite people, but we're just not romantic with each other. And that's it's just as valid. You know, each of those different things. Is it metamores? Yeah, 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 metamores. Um, I think that's just as valid and it's very important. So, knowing that, you know, we can love more. I think that's really what the important takeaway there is. We can love more and calling on that infinite it may be useful too, just because it's infinite. Calling on the infinite is powerful. It's very powerful. I am calling on the power of the infinite. Thank you for the head pads. Infinite head pads. I am now in a state of bliss. I shall transcend this mortal world. But now, calling on infinite, put that power to anything, and you're gonna boost it. It's a great booster energy. So. You know, you could you could also use brick with this <laughs> if you wanted to. Infinite brick! I'm gonna hit you with the building that never ends. <laughs> the Amaroboros. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> I need pants. So the last one is kind of sad, but it is about hiding. It is for those who cannot be open with their polyamorous relationships because they are shunned or whatever. It is solidarity with those who cannot be out about those things. And let's be honest, that's something we can all take into account because there are going to be people in places and situations where they cannot be out because the world is not as kind as it should be. Kindness is a human miracle. Nature can hit you with the tornado and not bad an eye, and it can destroy your whole life. But human beings, we can choose to be kind. And a lot of things can't do that. That's a miraculous. That is advancement. That's power. And I think it's one of the most important things in the world. One of the greatest powers is our ability to be kind. But some people don't do it. Some people are lacking that kindness. And so sometimes we have to hide. Now... Just like I said, I'm not always out. I'm not always out in every sphere because there's places where it's not safe. Hiding is an energy I could use. That could help you. Shadow glamour, which is the not, don't look at me. I'm not even here. I'm just a background player. I'm an NPC. I'm a shadow on the wall. I am just a stillness in the air. I am not even here. That, <laughs> infinite brick is a ninth level spell, almost certainly. Um, but yeah, that is a very useful technique. Um, it can get you out of dangerous situations. It can stop dangerous situations from happening. It can really save your life. So having that ability, I would say that is a very important energy to play with. If you can manage it, it's it's super useful. It also, you know, can, it can just keep you from all sorts of harassment. Very good. We got only about two minutes now, I think, or maybe seven, depending on who's starting next. Who Who is starting next? My brain is pretty terrible. I'm having a great time here, but um, I think we're getting close to time here. Um, I just found the name of our, of our raid chart. Yeah, I'm going to take a peek in a moment. Is she going live now? Okay. I'm going to look. I'm going to look for Miss... Which is it miss? Heck, oh, I don't know. Stormy Charger going on the Twitch. Why, why would you take me to a place that isn't correct? Oh, heck yeah. Give me time to run ads, please, and head on out on the hour. Okay, sounds great. I'm glad. I'm glad people learned a lot. And I, I, if there's any questions you got, please let me know. Um, I had a lot of fun doing the research. I learned a lot. I think this helped me a bit. Getting a little more in touch with, with some of my very gay roots and gay ancestors. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping this can be useful for everyone. And if you want to learn more magic stuff, I'm probably doing magic lessons for the foreseeable future every weekend at, uh, on Saturdays, usually around 9 p.m., so... That's my thing, but we're gonna go see Stormy Sound. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad! I'm glad people had fun. Had the things that you got to learn. Uh, and even make some good jokes. And embrace, you know, the power of the brick! <laughs> brick is good. 
Brick is very good. Hmm. Now I'm gonna go back to, uh... Need to get over it back real quick. I really love this thing. Just in case anybody wants to take another look at it. Get an idea what's going on with it. <laughs> the Barkana! Oh my god, Drea, that's so good. I'm stealing it. Just so you know. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think there was a lot of good thought put into this. Because it was definitely... I, I do feel like I'm so glad with the diversity thing because that was a way of saying you were always part of this in my mind. Oh no! Ad? Heck no. Snooze that. We ain't doing no ads. You can't teach an old dog new bricks! I just, I just got called old. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, what am I gonna do? Go ahead and put the. I'm just, I'm just typing it here, everyone. This was super fun, though. I really enjoyed teaching this, and uh, yeah. If anybody ever got any little you know, magical things you want to do, just let me know. I'm, I'm open to doing some collabs and stuff. If anybody wants to get spooky. <laughs> um. Hmm. <laughs> Stormy charger, all one word. I think so. Oh no. No, that would be Stromy. Typing. Bad. Type good instead. <laughs> Thank you. I did some unnecessary capitalization in there, but I think I'll be good. Gonna fire off real soon. This is kind of an awkward point. It's like, well, I've taught you everything. Um, I'm a dog. Back, back, back. Left, left, left. Back, back, left, left, left. You know, that's okay. Sometimes you do in fact. Ah, mega head pats. Magic I need to work with has to be cool with my ADHD. That's very true. I would recommend then using, um, ecstatic methods because, um, so. And an ecstatic method can be a thing like dancing, singing, it can be loud, and it's get yourself as excited as possible to fire off your magic. Versus being in the like fully like, I have suppressed all my emotions, my mind is clear, I am in a meditative state. Because I'm pretty good with doing the full meditative state. But I've also done ecstatic and be very fun. It can be a little tricky, but it's very fun. I would highly recommend doing a more ecstatic thing where you, you really put your energy out there. Because I think you, listen, Arlie, if nothing else, I think you're pretty good at putting your energy out there. Wizard versus Bard, which are you? Oh, you're asking a hard question. You're asking a hard question, but, uh, I think, geez, depending on the day, I'll give you different answers. Um, but as a chaos magician, I don't know. Hmm. Depending on the day, it can be totally different. I will not say a wild mage because that is way more chaotic than my actual very disciplined ass is. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> they both work. I don't know. <laughs> I have a hard time choosing on that because there's a very big difference between how real world magic works versus versus game magic. Oh, oh, it's about time. Almost. My minute left. Sometimes I think druid, but only because there's a bit more of a like spiritual vibe there. But I don't think cleric because it's not all about me worshiping gods and stuff. So wizard's pretty good, but I also do a lot of self-empowerment, so sorceries in the mix, and that's the thing. It's all a mess. It all kind of blurs together. Mm-hmm. And I think it's time. So, thank you all so much. I'll see you over there. Bye! Oh, it's not going to let me hit the button. Of it, it? Dang it. Naturalistic pantheism. Very interesting, Valerian. Okay. 
We're gonna go in three, two, one. Happy Pride, everyone, and I'll see you there.